Okay, guys, we're going to be discussing vectors in this video. Uh, vectors are a very useful part of mathematics, used in a wide range of engineering and scientific settings. Uh, for example, if you're calculating a force field, like a, an electromagnetic force field, uh, each point in space would be given a vector, which shows the strength and the direction of the force that you would experience at, at that particular point. So what is a vector? Well, a vector is an entirely different kind of object to the usual objects that you're used to in maths. The normal objects that you're used to are scalars, like normal numbers, and all they have is a magnitude, a size. For example, five. Five is a number, it's a scalar, it has a magnitude, a size, and the size is five. That's it. All of the numbers that you know, all of the uh, algebraic symbols, for example, if you have x squared equals nine, and we figure out that x is equal to plus or minus three, the x's are also scalars, because in the end, they're just a number, in this case, plus or minus three. A vector is an entirely different mathematical object that you've never seen before. It's a different thing. It has both a magnitude, a size, like a number, but it also has a direction. Numbers don't have directions. I suppose you could count the plus and the minus as a direction, but vectors have a, a 360 direction. They can be in any direction. And so if you take a look here in this coordinate grid, we've got two points, A and B, and the arrow drawn between. Point A is at 3, 4, and point B is at 5, 7. Now the vector goes 2 along and 3 up. And in order to demonstrate this uh, direction of this vector, we show the vector as a vector column, like so. Vector column. And what that says, the vector column, just like with uh, a normal coordinate grid where you have your coordinates, x comes first, horizontal, and then vertical, along the corridor, up the stairs, as you were taught in primary school. The x is at the top, the y is at the bottom, so that's 2 to the right and 3 up. If you had a vector column, for example, negative 2, 3, that would mean 2 to the left, because it's negative 2, and then 3 up. So that would be in this sort of direction. So that's how a vector column demonstrates to you the direction. The size of the vector, which we're not going to look into right now, the magnitude of the vector, is the length of this line. In this case, this would be a 2, this would be a 3. You'd have to use Pythagoras' theorem and then find that the length of this squared is 2 squared plus 3 squared and then square root it because this ends up as a right angle triangle here. But we're not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you that the magnitude of a vector is its size. We're going to be concentrating more on the directions of vectors and how they work. So here we have two vectors. A and B. Now, there are a fair few different notations for vectors. This A to D is this vector here with this arrow going to the right. It's one, two, three, four to the right. So this is notation in mathematics notation. It's AD, but we've all we can also give it as a small letter underlined, which is how we write it on page on the paper. Uh, in textbooks, they won't do it as an underlining, they will do it as a bold vector, like so, a bold letter A. So there's main, the main three different types of notation. You see A to D with an arrow, and that'll be in capitals. You'll see a small letter A with an underline written down on paper. And in textbooks where they're printed, you'll see a bold letter A instead of the underline. It's all the same thing. So right now we have this vector, well, we're going to use the underlying notation from now on. We've got this vector A and this vector B. A is 0 uh, up and down and 4 to the right. So it's 4 to the right and 0 up and down. So it's the vector 4, 0. B is 2 to the right and 3 up. So it's the vector 2, 3. Now, if we want, for example, the vector A to C, what we do is we find a path from the beginning, A, to the end, C, going through different letters. 
So where's our path? Well, our path is here. It's A to B plus B to C. Just imagine yourself as a little little stick figure guy walking along these lines, and that's it. That's all it is. If I want to go from A to C, then I walk from A to B, and then I walk from B to C. Now, what is B to C as a vector? It's not written on there. Well, this is the interesting thing about vectors. It doesn't matter where they are. It only matters what direction and size they are. That's the only thing that defines a vector. So because this is 4 to the right and 0 up and down, this is also the vector A. And this one, 2 to the right and 3 up, is also the vector B. So this is uh, clearly a parallelogram. We've got two parallel sides uh, given by the vectors B and two parallel sides given by the vectors A. So what is the vector here, AC? Well, the vector AC is the vector AB plus the vector BC. That's our path. To go from A to C, we go from A to B and then B to C. We know in terms of these underlying vectors that that is AB is just the vector B and BC is the vector A and so that's it. The vector A to C is the vector B plus A or it doesn't really matter the order that you add things up so that's A plus B because you can go to the right and up as well. It doesn't matter which path you choose as long as you get there it will be correct. So interesting uh, vector, mm, no, try that again. So adding and subtracting vectors has an interesting geometric interpretation. So take this triangle here, A, B, C. Now, if I want to go from A to C, I'll go from A to B and B to C. That's one possible path I could take. A to C is A to B, plus b to c. Okay? So that's all vector addition is. If I want to go from one point to another point, I find a third external point and then go from the, my initial point through the external point to my final point. And then I get my proper vector notation for that. So we have ac is ab plus BC. Now, if on the other hand, I wanted to go from B to C, still just going from an initial point B to a final point C, I'm going to have to go against the vector AB here. I'm going to have to go in the opposite direction. And what happens there? Well, an opposite vector, we know that AB is 2, 4. To go in the opposite direction, where the arrow would be backwards here, you would go 2 to the right and 4 down. So that's BA is 2 to the left, rather, and 4 down, negative 2 and negative 4. So in other words, to go in the opposite direction to a vector, you simply make it negative. That's all. So. What do we have here? To go from B to C, we go minus AB. Plus AC. And we already figured out what AC was. It was AB plus BC. So we have. Let's write this out there. We have AC minus AB. And if we plug that, if we plug AC in, we'll find that we, we, this does work out. And so there we go. We have a, sub, uh, a notation here for subtraction of vectors. Subtraction of vectors. And that's the geometric interpretation. To go from A to C, we can add vectors in this direction. Or if we're going against a vector, we can subtract. So final point to make here is if I want to go from a vector B to a vector C I can take a third point A here and I can take the final position vector from A which is AC minus the initial position vector from A which is AB and that will be my answer. So one last example what is the vector from A to B? 
if I take a third external point C, then it's the final vector, which is CB, subtract the initial vector, which is uh, CA. So to go from A to B, it's the final vector from the origin C, from our start point, CB, subtract CA. And if you plug it in, this will work. Okay, let's do uh, a proper vector problem here and we'll see how this all fits together because so far this has just been uh, some collection of thoughts on vectors. Uh, before we move on to this, there's one point we need to emphasize. If I have a vector, let's say this one, uh, all the way along here, A, which is 1, 2, 3 across and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up. So A is 3, 6. If I wanted to half that vector and do the vector that's exactly half of A, then all I've got to do is half the coordinates. So it would be 1.53, which checks out. One and a half would be here, three up here. So that works. So in other words, if you want to change the size of a vector, all you have to do is multiply it by that factor. Another thing that that can be used to prove is when two vectors are parallel. So for example, that vector we just showed there, a half A, we can prove that it's parallel to the full vector A, that's a half A just to this point, because a half A is equal to some constant, which in this case is a half, times A. And if it is only different by a constant, then that means all we've done is change the size, the magnitude of the vector, and so those two are parallel. They lie on the same line there. That's going to be useful in this question. So, here's the main problem. We have a parallelogram here. M is the midpoint between B and C, and N divides the line OB into the ratio 2 to 1. Question 1 is to find O to N, O to M, A to N, and A to M. Question 2 is prove that A, N, and M lie on a straight line. It's a very common vector question, this one. So let's start by finding O, N, O, M, A, N, and A, M. And we, the first thing we do is we find the easiest vectors on here. So that's just A and C. So let's just start off by giving those. A, as we've seen, is 3, 6. And C is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 along and 0 up. Okay. And this, of course, will be C here. And this will be A up and down there. So to go from O to N, we need to find a path. Well, we can first of all go from O to A then from A to B, then from B to N. But we still don't know where B to N is. So we're going to need to know this OB line first and then use the ratio where this has been split into a ratio of two to one. So let's do that. We've got A and C. Let's call this one O to B, B. And we know that O to B is equal to O to A plus A to B. So we've got A plus C. So that's O to B is A plus C. Now we can get this started because if O to B is A plus C, O to N is going to be two thirds of it because it's split into the ratio of two to one. Two parts, one part means this whole line is three parts. So O to N is two thirds of O to B. So O to N is two thirds of O to B. Label that on there, B. So we know that B is A plus C. So we've got two thirds A plus C. And and if we're going to leave, if we're going to uh, give our vectors in terms of A and C, then we're done for O to N. 
because we found our vector two thirds along the way of this line. Now to go O to M, we need to find a path again from O to M. So let's go, I would say the easiest one is from O to C and then from C to M where M is the midpoint of this vector C to B, which is also the vector A. So O to M is O to C plus C to M, which is C plus a half A. And there we go, we're done. Next, A to N, from going from here to there. Finding a path, we'll go from A to B, which is C, and then we'll go one third of the negative of B. And that will get us from here to there, because remember B was in the direction of tire bottom left to top right. So A to N is equal to C along here, plus B to N, which is plus one third of the negative I'll do that differently. I'll just say minus rather than plus then. It's minus a third rather than plus a third if it's going in this direction. Minus a third of B where B was A plus C. There we go. A plus C. So simplifying this out, we have C subtract a third A subtract a third C, which simplifies to two thirds C minus a third A. And the last one, A to M. We need to go from A to B, which is C, and then a half of negative A, so minus a half a. And then we're done. A to M is C minus a half A. Okay. So now that we've got all three or uh, four of these sorted, we can answer question part two. Prove that A, N, and M lie on a straight line. What we're looking for here is to show that the vector from A to N is some constant multiple of the vector A to M, that will prove that they are parallel. And since both of those lines, those vectors A to N and A to M contain this single point A, then we have that they are on the same straight line. So let's show that. We have A to N, which is our two thirds C minus a third A. And we want to show that it's some constant multiple of A to M which is C minus a half A. So can we think of how we might do that? Well, A to M is bigger, that's a C. A to N is two thirds C. So let's try multiplying by two thirds. That looks like that's going to work out. I'm just going to assume this and then if it, uh, we'll see if it works out. So let's say A to N is two thirds A to M. So that must mean that it's two thirds of C minus a half a, which would mean it was two thirds C minus a third A, which is exactly what we expect for A to N. So that is true. A to N is two thirds of A to M. We've just shown that. And therefore, since A to N is two thirds A to M, that means that A to N is some constant multiple of A to M. And since A is shared by both of them, they lie on the same straight line. This here, this line proves that A and A N and A M are parallel. And the fact that they both share the point A means that they lie on a straight line. Okay, time for you to have a go at your own vector question here. Similar to the one we just did before, just a, an extra step up in difficulty. 
If you think you've got the correct answer, please put your comment, uh, your answers in the comment section. My name is Adam, tutor for Sherpa. I can give you the answer to this question, as can any math tutor for Sherpa. I'd love to see your comments on this. Let me know if you think you've got it right. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.